I think the Invitational means a lot to everyone that attends it. I mean, we won it last time, so to us, obviously, it means that we need to take it again. Uh, we, we don't aim to come second, we don't aim come to go out in semis or anything like that. We, we aim to win it, but the tournament itself, it just means everything to every player that comes here. It's the biggest tournament, it's the most important tournament, and it gives you the most money. Invitationals is, it's the major of Siege. So the teams that go here do not get here for cheap. They do not get here for free, they don't get lucky, they don't have like other teams performing worse than them. It's every single team performing the best that they absolutely can. And on top of that, it's also in Montreal. It is like near the headquarters of Ubisoft. It is where it all started. And this is like the traditional thing that if you've been here before, you want to go here again. And if you haven't been here before, you want to go there for the first time because that's where you set your mark as like legends, so to speak. My role in the team is I'm the co-coach and analyst for G2. It was always like a dream to work with, uh, like alongside this roster with Fabian, uh, Chess, Goga, Kanto and the others. I used to be a player before. Uh, five months ago I decided to start coaching because I realized I'm not good enough to play on like an international level. Chess used to be my coach when I was a player, so that's like kind of a uh, triangle relationship. And uh, yeah, now I'm like we are basically back together now. I, I would say we're prepared. We're prepared for every situation there is. Of course, we have stronger and weaker maps like everyone else does. Um, going into it, I, I think we expect ourselves to win every tournament we go into. So it's kind of like, even if we have a rough time in Pro League, that's not going to really affect us. It might affect some self-confidence, but other than that, like as a team, I don't think we have any doubts. We are not there to have fun, we're there to win. So no matter who we play against, we're going to go in there with the mentality to crush them 7-0, 7-0 from Mantis. And here's the thing is that Mantis is consistently starved for information, largely off of their own wooing. That's a fadeaway if I've ever seen one. Kanto, oh my god. Kanto on an operator that's not Ash. Oh, a beautiful shot from Goga. Hetty plays right into the hands of the Thermite. And Goga's in. He's in bathroom. He's gonna see Nova. Drops one, looking for another. Envy Taylor frags out onto Fabian. Kanto takes one down, Jonas eliminates Nelio. G2 starting to fire things up, as now Envy Taylor will try to grab one, but can't grab Kanto Ricchetti. Totally reasonable strategy, but it's gonna be Goga to get the shot onto Sweet Black. He also thermites Church Wall. This is an old strategy. The shotgun doesn't work out for Hetty. He'll just sit in a really nice spot with nobody able to push him. Say goodbye to the mute, Kanto takes out Sweet Black. Fabian's still biding his time. Here come the pings, and oh! <laughs> Fabian gets one Kanto, one of his own. Oh, it's, it's gonna be the Alda. Oh, looking for one, it's a volley as G2 picks up three kills, and Hetty and Sweet Black will need to keep this even. Goga takes out one, and there he goes, Jonas with the final kill, and they survive an absolute scare as they tip their hats to their Korean counterparts. So we have the difficulty to read the opponent at first in Clubhouse, for example. Uh, they were playing really scattered, in my opinion, that they were coming one by one from certain angles that are seen as odd coming from EU meta. But we managed to do something. I don't, I don't still know which was the best adaptation from us, like to play more aggressive or to play more passive. I, I didn't personally figure it out ever, but we, we could take the win from overtime and that's all that matters. Going up against an APAC team can go either way. We've practiced them a lot during most events before, mostly because other teams kind of don't want to practice us because they see us as the main opponent, so they don't want to practice us, but APAC has always been happy to. So we've practiced a lot against, well, Mantis, Nora Rengu, we've practiced a lot against. The APAC teams are getting better and better, and I think people are sleeping on APAC overall in, in, in its own regard. They're very top heavy though, so the teams that actually are here, they're good, but underneath that, it's not much to look out for. I don't think there's much pressure now. I think we had the pressure in the beginning of the Pro League season, when then we played terribly, and now the pressure is kind of, oh, now people are used to us losing or used to us drawing. So maybe the pressure is less now. We are still the, the reigning champions from previous invitationals, which means that we need to maintain our title. Um, I don't think the pressure is going to be anything in groups. I think that's going to be us and the opponent. I think maybe once we've proven ourselves and we can do well again and we get to quarterfinals, we have a crowd. You know, now people are like, oh, G2 is back now. It's just like they've been saving strats like they've been saying they have. You know, all those rumors. 
So maybe once we get to quarters, it'll change a little bit. But currently, I think the pressure that we have is from each other and ourselves and not really from the outside. Because we, we know more than other people do because we are the ones, you know, failing. We're the ones doing terribly in scrims and whatnot. So we kind of understand that it's not because necessarily that everybody's better than us, which some teams are, but it's us not living up to expectations. So if we can fill the gap, you know, meet it halfway, halfway our expectations get better. And then if all the teams make a little bit of mistakes, then I feel like we can even the ground a little bit more. wait for your allies to get into position before you start acting and aggressing into like a, a danger zone, let's say. I want us, yep, simplified. I want us to also not overly criticize when something goes wrong. Do the best you can given the current situation. Don't have an emotional response. We're here to win, we're not here to be upset, okay? A decent amount of time from the post plant. Very minimal. They now have the two players to work with here. As Corey, once again, looks to cut these players off as quickly as possible. Fail, no! Gets the better of them. As we do see him taking down Corey with the trade, but Goga on the flank knocks him out. There should be enough time for this defuse, and with that, we'll see G2 come out on top as Goga finishes off the final 1v1. It's beautiful. Real close here. SMG 11 in hand. This Kanto to win it. My, my, KS's head will get shot right off of his shoulder. They're going to have themselves since they have this 5 lead. They're definitely going to be feeling the capability to try riskier plays here. The drone is being knocked out so quickly. Possibly might oh, be. there we go. That is a big one from Jonas on the 590. Quickly making work of Kryon with just a single hit. Rips is also knocked out a moment later, just like that. Has to find him. There's still one more in the back. I wonder if that's Kanto Ricketti. No, he's actually closer up, and Pingu takes damage, but is still alive on the Jaeger. He'll actually go for the for the repeak. Fabian will find one kill, but he runs right into Rips, who looks into him and rips into him. Pengu will find the kill on Vale as he'll be the one to finish him off. And Yunus for the last one to secure victory for G2. That's all she wrote. Number round number 10. Again, a 7-3 in both of our maps, Villa and Coastline. Victory for the reigning world champions of G2. We know how to play Mokit. They also know how we play, but I think we can adapt better. I think it was a mix between good communication with the team. Like, we played together all the time, and I think we also had a good day, so that's good. Venue is actually amazing, and I feel now I feel the hype for this event when I went there and saw what kind of setup they have there. It's it's amazing. Now I have more confidence that we can win this whole event with the new team, and uh, I, I just really hope that we can pull it off. Um, the opening ceremony and rehearsals, seeing the stage for the first time uh, today was actually I think the proudest moment I've had seeing the stage because we walked in doing a photo shoot for ESL for the, for the like, opening pictures and whatnot. And we walked into the stage as Matt is doing the intro for all the teams coming in. And he starts with Fnatic, you know, he goes EG, he goes Empire. And as we go in to take the pictures, he goes like, Ferris major champions, Pro League champions, World champions, G2. And I'm like, that's us. And then live orchestra is rehearsing at the same time. So we get live orchestra while Matt is doing the intro, while we walk in on the stage. And it feels like we're going in for the first time, but it's just rehearsals, it doesn't even matter. Um, and I think get, getting that actually like, experience before the main event itself is really nice because like, we get a little bit of tears out and we get a little bit emotional. Uh, now we've had a taste for it and hopefully tomorrow we can keep it together. The li live orchestra playing the, I don't know if it's the invitational soundtrack or just the Rainbow Six soundtrack. But anyway, that, that is the, obviously it's like, touches me because last time it was the same same song and we won and uh, yeah yeah that that's cool we don't think it's that we accomplish something big yet until we win the tournament um, we are well prepared for the next match and I think we're gonna win to be honest while I'm also listening to the orchestra and at the same time they're saying the, our team name and the player names it's it actually gives me goosebumps.
I mean, no matter who we play, I, I will always think we're the best team in the world. Like, I will always say that everyone else, everyone else is just not as good as we are. But I wouldn't say that there's no competition. If they have a good day, we have a bad day, anything can happen. And we just misplay a map and, you know, every all the pressure is on us all of a sudden. So, I don't know, I, I just think that if we prepare ourselves correctly and we, we go into the game with clear minds and we're prepared the way we should be, then we'll win every game we play. And I don't really care who we play in the semis or who we play in the, well, in the final at all. I just think we'll beat them. Going into the SSG game, they're a good team. I think we're better. A third for Bosco as he takes out Jonas. Bosco silenced, Chalin goes down, Goga gets traded off by Rampy, and Fabian inside of Dirt will have three bodies to find. Adding to his stats, he'll take out Rampy. Diffuser going down from Redeemer. Where are you, Fabian? Can you get the oh, no. place? It gets shot at the last second! An incredible opportunity from Thinking Nade, and Fabian is trapped in Dirt. Look left, look right, but you're not getting out of there alive! Thinking Nade propels us to the final round, 7-7. Seven, seven. And ladies and gentlemen, it looks like we've got liftoff with Kanto in a 4v1 with 30 seconds to go. Fighting from behind the entire map. Is there gonna be a miracle? There won't be. There's a shutdown and they're fired up. Space Station will take their map. Only three seconds left, and it might be bad timing for Fabian, but it also might be the clutch, as now Redeemer is stuck in the plant, and he's gonna get eliminated. What a clutch from Fabian. Of this hard destruction, Pengu takes out Redeemer, dives through the window and off the top ropes, picks up a double kill, as he'll head for the hill. He's going to be felled by the clock. A couple bodies in a mirror window will stand in his way. Bosco coming on in, there's a push. He'll grab one, but pushed off by Pengu, and there you have it. Bosco so close. Oh, we don't really know exactly. Kanto Raketi gets Chal and Goga is there, as now Bosco's primed and ready. Oh no, they run out of bullets at G2! Just punch on in, and, and we are dangerously close. Rampy knows it, look at his face, come on! It doesn't matter, G2 is there, Rampy the impactless frag! He's upset, but G2 look to repeat, and they punch a ticket to the semi-finals. So the HD game was really tough. Uh, they played extremely well and they play a play style that is something that we struggle with. Uh, we played Secret and Pro League and it's like they play four cards inside, they play one card roaming and we just struggled to find the openings. Um, and then we had a really tough time like with each other, like the flow of the game and communication. Mm, we weren't there as a team against SSG. Uh, we, we had our own struggles, we were fighting our own strategies and then we had to still fight the opponent at the same time. So that was basically what went wrong there. We, I, I would like to say that we could have done it better, but again, we didn't. So it's kind of hindsighted thing to say. We go to semis, we play similar maps, we play clubhouse, and we just see an instant change of flow and communication and how we perceive the game. And we just seem like we need like a tough time and then figure stuff out and then play better. It's worked for us before and it worked for us this time again. And it's kind of like our evil circle that we have where we're really good and it goes, falls apart and then we have a hard time and then we get better and then rinse and repeat.
dirt. Say it again, man, and that's a reverse. Uh, never never rehearse. Trying to go for a second, but can't grab it as Pengu refrags. Walks right back in. One. Pengu coming around the corner. He sees him. He knows exactly where he is, but he fails on the pre fire. Still nails the last shots. Pengu challenges, though, and gets another refrag. He's on top of things. Jonas is there to support, and from behind, he's going to eliminate Laxing, who is trying to flank Pengu. Allowing for the plant. What a play from Jonas. Pengu takes down Skies. It's a trade. C4 goes out. Caught by Pengu. Fabian falls. Pengu doing so much work right now. He's got every kill except for one for his team on this round. Mark is currently being isolated himself from the site. There's so many marks for him to go in. Hard in the pot of 4K by Pengu. What a play. And Goga missing the shots, but Pengu doesn't. Takes out Skies. Goga's there as well. Had a clutch factor from G2 as it's on 0 0 0 and he falls off the plant. Match point for G2. This Kanto to take out Mark. Still a lead in favor of G2, but this could go real bad. Fire blowing away, but Jonas looks the wrong way. One body drops. Fabian takes out Retro with that C4. As the two remaining members of Reciprocity will have to be as good in the clutch. Skies walks right in, finds a freebie on Jonas as Jonas is unable to get the disabled needed. Goga is down and Kanto realizes, hey, let's bring him back. It's a 3v1 now. Fast, but Fabian can finally frag out, takes out Skies, and one kill away as there's Fabian. Handshakes all around, ladies and gentlemen, in the box. Clubhouse. G2 taken. The drone goes out from Skies as flank watch as he watches all the way in towards A. And thrown on the floor is Goga, who'll find another. Looking for a fourth. Goga, my, my. The man is unshakable, right? Laxing will be on that detached solo room. Rome, as you discussed, it's going to be down in the blue bar. He's got the C4, and he can't be useful. He doesn't commit to that hole, and because of that, Jonas will not be caught off guard. What a call. That had to have been a teammate. Otherwise, excellent game sense from Jonas to allow for that to happen. And uh, wow, man advantage now in favor of G2, and it's going to get even worse. Pegu takes one down as Mark is there. Phone calls ringing, one body left. G2, there you have it! They'll repeat back to the Grand Finals. They have a chance to raise that hammer one more time. They want it. The Reciprocity's triumphant run comes to an end. It's gonna be an all EU final as the Russian squad of Team Empire will take on the reigning, defending world champions of G2. I'm broken. I can't. Oh, you're I can't broken. Start. I can't even start. It. I'm still oh, aging. Oh. Try to. Yeah. I can't. I can't. I know how to do this. How is this so? How is this so? It's so easy. I can do the first part. The, the problem is the first part. part. This, this, I can do this. But this, this, this. Okay, so. Boom. 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 Boom, boom. Hey, I'm doing it. No, you're not doing it. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Fuck. And then you fuck on the other one. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. 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 He's trying so hard to make it right too. Look at his. He's so stiff. <laughs> yeah, he's so stiff. No I'm so stiff. Oh, no. But it's, it's, it's Goga. He's the only thing he knows. Defending the title was the only thing I wanted except for making quarters because obviously if you don't make quarters you don't get to play on stage that sucks right once we've made quarters I'm like okay it doesn't matter to garden semis it doesn't matter to garden court we need to fight in the final right I can I can quote unquote lose the final and be happy uh, but not being able to fight for it would be terrible and also if you look at last year so these are third invitationals the first one each won the second one each was in the final against us so Traditionally speaking, the winner has always fought for the title in every single uh, major event so far. Um, and it would be terrible if we couldn't. I mean, that would be the worst that would go out because we'd be spoken of as legends, we'd be spoken of in the final, but we wouldn't be there to represent it. So it going there was, was really, means a lot.
default spot, but actually he's just inside of the building. You notice he's getting hit Shepard by Sunrise Bar. That was an excellent shot there. Team Empire going for a forced rotation, but Pengu's on top of it. It's just Karzeka. He's above. He'll have to retake onto five, and he's not even gonna get one. G2, what a round. Sunrise for you. Shock will give his position away as he tries to go for a couple of hands to present themselves. But Pengu takes out Shock, it's 2v5. Are we finally going to have a thrilling conclusion here to map number one? Goga just sitting and waiting, watching. He's got Kanto right next to him. Where are Scyther and Shepard? As they're going to have to hurry, but Shockwave already down. Scyther sprints right in, takes out one. He loses a bit of HP, but he's traded off. And there you finally have it. It might have taken. 22 rounds! Kanto Kateri setting up a C4 and he's gonna land it perfectly on top of East Stairs! Two for him! Small offices, which is where we currently see Jonas, but there's two for G2, an excellent position. Both Joystick and Karzeka fall, and it's A that is completely open. Shepard is seated, but Scyther will have to come on in. There goes Shock and G2 are so close! They just have two more to find here on Empire and a tall task for the Russian squad. And there you have it, Fabian takes two. They call him the best player in the world. Well, in that position, he's not losing. And G2 will move to championship point up two to nothing. He's gonna peek out, but Goga just absolutely shuts him down. Karzaka with a longer range angle gets felled by Fabian, 2 v 3 Very good straight here for Team Empire. But that's a freebie as Fabian walks in, looks for another, can't land it on the castle trying to finish him off. Pengu knows, and it's swung in favor as Joystick, who is so superbly talented as a player, will come on back. He's got those Habana holes being opened up, but he's shut down by Pengu and G2 somehow managed. He needs to get into the site and keep in mind, in a 4v1, they are the best team that has ever played Rainbow Six, and the first team to repeat as defending reigning world champions it doesn't matter the region, it doesn't matter the team, it doesn't matter the roster. They will find you and they will win G2 Take the Six Invitational 2019. And that's two in a row for G2. Absolutely amazing, just adding to their impressive list of accomplishments. Season one, season four, season five, the second Invitational, the season eight, the Paris Major, all of The funny part is like people ask how, how it feels to be world champion and how it is to be like, oh, now you know you're the best. I've known we're the best all the time. It doesn't matter what people tell me. They can tell me, oh, you're fourth or whatever, we are in Pro League. I couldn't care less. I know we're the best team when we need to be and I know that no matter what I do, I have my second family behind me and we want to win something, we'll do it. I'm really happy that I finally got like the, the biggest tournament uh, in my pocket. Um, I was pretty sad uh, last time when we went out in quarters, but well, now I have it. Uh, it feels brilliant to join the club with the Doc, back-to-back -back world champion two times. Uh, I think our performance was 95%. I think we could actually bring a little bit more. I think Coast was an absolute slugfest, uh, but it was an endurance match, and I don't think either team really brought their best. Uh, there's always mistakes that get made when the pressure's as high as it is. It feels good. Uh, I'm really happy for what we achieved. Like we've been, we've been winning everything for the last six, eight months, every single tournament. And yeah, now we have to get ready for the next one. I'm just happy.